Welcome back to the Crow's Nest. My name's Jay, and today we are sitting down and taking a critical look at Battlefield 5. Is it good? Is it bad? What are its strengths and what are its weaknesses? All that and more in this video. Before we get started with the review, I want to say that before I made this, I wanted to spend more time with the game. I recently jumped in on the 15th of November with the Deluxe Edition, and I've spent the last week actively playing so I could spend some time with it before going ahead and sharing my thoughts. With that said, let's jump right in. Let's start with the game's strong points. Battlefield 5 is without a doubt a massive step in the right direction for the franchise. This is a newer reimagining from Battlefield 1 and more in line with some of the more classic Battlefield games like 3 and 4. I've heard the comments about this game being a clone or a reskin of Battlefield 1 or DLC and it's simply not true, not even remotely close. First up, squad gameplay is back at the forefront in this release. The emphasis on team play and communication really shines through, especially when you have good squad mates paired alongside you. Something many people I've spoken to and something I noticed straight away is the pacing of the game. You can't necessarily run and gun like you might have in other Battlefield titles or in other shooters. Battlefield 5 has a much more strategic, methodical, and tactical approach to it. Pair that with a good squad that communicates and works well with each other and the game's potential really starts to shine. Adding to the strategic approach, the new attrition system in that both health and ammo are limited create a bond between you and other players. In order to succeed, you need to work together and rely on each other. Now, that's not to say that you can't play Battlefield solo. That's not what I'm getting at at all. Solo play is often a viable option and still offers tons of great gameplay moments whether or not you choose to work closely with others. The gunplay is top notch as well. The guns take time to master and learn and each of the weapons balance each other out in a rock paper scissors type of vacuum. Add in skill and mastery and it all becomes better. The new specializations for both class and weapon customization is a welcome addition to the series as well. Each option does make your class feel different from specialization to specialization and weapon customization. There's no more unused variants like in Battlefield 1, instead BF5 does it right. The level design and scale is also top notch. The standout level for me is Aris, the open fields and country roads all leading to a densely populated city center is exactly what I pictured for this type of game. Ever since the Frostbite engine was introduced years ago, I wanted to see a level of detail and destruction set in a World War II environment. DICE absolutely nails that with their levels in this game. The amount of detail and level of destruction is leaps and bounds beyond any other BF game to date. Add in the new fortification system and the levels become even more complex in a good way. Seriously now, from here on out, I cannot imagine a future Battlefield game without the fortification system in place. A well-placed roadblock, a blown out bridge, or a machine gun emplacement can mean the difference between success and failure in game. It's a fun new way to play. Now for the negative side of Battlefield, the more critical view of what the game is. If you followed the announcement of BF5 during the reveal event, you know of the ensuing PR and marketing nightmare that surrounded the game. I can only imagine it impacted the audience reception and sales of the game. The good news is, the team at DICE have certainly steered the ship in the right direction. The question now is whether or not they'll be able to bounce back fully from the initial chaos. Pair that with the initial perception with the Tides of War system and there's a big question at hand. For those that don't know, DICE is going to be releasing content directly to players in a new live event campaign where the story of World War II will be told chronologically, otherwise known as the Tides of War. That means right now with the launch of Battlefield 5, we're only seeing a limited number of armies, locations, weapons, vehicles, and maps. We're at more or less the start phase of the war. The iconic locations that many of us have grown up playing and expect to see like Normandy, Stalingrad, Berlin, the Pacific Islands, and more have yet to make it into the game. We can only assume we'll get these locations, associated armies, weapons, and more later on through the Tides of War release. It's worth mentioning that all of these releases will be free. There's no premium pass or paid DLC of maps and expansions. Only cosmetics can be purchased with real money in the future. Something else I can't turn a blind eye to is the amount of bugs at the present moment. The bugs range from comically funny in terms of visual glitches to frustrating moments in game that either range in an unnecessary death to full on restart of the game. I haven't experienced anything too game breaking at the moment with any type of exploit or glitching that's unfairly put others ahead, but the bugs we do have are there and they're present. The one bit of good news in terms of this is that DICE has already been rolling out patches to fix these issues and are both actively taking feedback and still making adjustments. The last critique I have of the game actually has very little to do with the game and more to do with the menu interface. The menu is exhaustive in the sense that you have to go through two or three screens of selections, drop downs and more just to kind of find what you're looking for. Oddly enough, the menu in previous Battlefield titles were pretty straightforward and got straight to the good stuff when you needed and wanted it. 
In BF5, I can't help but feel the process is overly complicated. I know many players have been vocal about the issue, and DICE is aware of the feedback. Hopefully, this one gets sorted out soon. In closing, Battlefield 5 has the potential to be among the franchise's best. Improvements to gunplay, pacing, squad dynamics, and more elevate the game to a brand new level. The true test is the longevity of the game with the Tides of War live service. The service is free, which is fantastic, in that it won't split the player base, but can DICE keep the content fresh and new in a timely manner? If there's one thing the devs have shown, it's that they're keen on receiving and implementing feedback. That's apparent from the initial reveal to what we currently have. The change is more in line with what players wanted. Now, the devs just need to get on track with tackling the game's biggest bugs and the lifespan in order to make the game even bigger than what it already is. If you're looking to jump into a chaotic, often intense first-person shooter that has a heavy reliance on team play and brings the story of World War II to the forefront, Battlefield 5 is your game. Right now, the game is very fun and addictive, even with its shortcomings. With the right direction and adjustment from the dev team, Battlefield 5 has the potential to be among the series' very best. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed it, click the like button. If you're interested in seeing more, click the subscribe button, followed up with the bell icon to stay up to date with the channel. As always, my name's Jay, and until next time, fair winds and following seas.